so hi everyone, welcome to our talk. Uh, today we're going to talk uh, about uh, adding conversational features to your mobile app. So in your case will be Android apps, of course, because I think uh, most of you are Android developers. I'm Elaine, I'm here with my colleague Jade. Uh, we both work for a developer agency uh, based in France. And we do, we do a lot of, uh, we work with a lot of technologies with a lot of kind of the different clients. Uh, yeah, so we're based in France. And now today, before uh, starting talking about conversational features, I would like to clarify a subject. Is the difference between um, apps for the Google Assistant and apps for and Android apps? I think a lot of people get confused because uh, the Google Assistant is present on um, on Android. So on the right hand, uh, on the left hand side of the slides, you see what a Google Assistant app looks like. Either it works with the Google Home, so you don't actually see it because it's audio only or it works with the Google Assistant that is embedded on your Android or an, uh, on your iPhone. So you see it's very, very white, so it's inside of the Google. Uh, this is like what apps look like on the Google Assistant. On the right-hand side, you see what a, a standard an Android app looks like. Uh, I think uh, you may have used uh, this one, so you see, um, I think you know uh, what Android apps are. So uh, this is only to summarize the difference between uh, the Google Assistant platform and the Android platform. So um, those, are, those are two different, uh, completely different um, user platforms and developer platforms. On the Google Assistant side, when you want to extend, when you want to the apps that are called uh, Actions, and uh, you use the developer platform that is called Actions on Google. When you want to browse uh, th those apps, uh, you have to go to something that is called uh, the Assistant App Directory. So you can see on the right-hand side, when the, for the Android side, things that you already know, there's actually nothing in common. And so, summarize, the Google Assistant is not Android. I think a lot of people get confused about that. All the, the languages that you use, the way that you do apps, is not at all the same thing, uh, but the Google Assistant is on Android. And to finish, uh, this talk is not about the Google Assistant. It's about integrating conversational features in your app using things that you are um, used to see on the Google Assistant, but we want to take advantage of that and um, integrate it in, on your own existing app. So to start, uh, we'd like to talk a little bit about the evolutions of interfaces, how we uh, interact with uh, computers. So for a long time, the only way that we had to use to interact uh, with computers uh, was the uh, command line interface. I think everyone here still uses this, those kind of interfaces. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you type in a command, you get some output. But in order to use that, you have to know either by heart all the commands that you can use or, uh, I don't know, check it out on a big manual because uh, those kind of interfaces were available before the internet was uh, available. Even if you wanted to get some help, even if you didn't uh, know how to uh, use uh, some kind of command, even to get help, you had to know the help command. That is a man. But yes, you have, uh, so not for everyone. Then came the uh, graphical user interfaces. A lot better. Um, a lot more user-friendly. Uh, we have created uh, concepts like windows and uh, text views and buttons and the interactions of clicking, scrolling, dragging, dropping. Do you see all those uh, new concepts that we had to create in order to interact with computers? <laughs> what if uh, instead of us adapting to computers in order to talk to computers, in order to interact with computers, Actually, uh, we worked on the other way around. Computers, they could actually understand uh, how we talk naturally. So this is where the conversational UI comes in. Um, you, the, the basic idea behind the conversational, UI, conversational UIs is that you use your natural language, either by typing in or using your voice. And the idea is that it's available for everyone because there's basically, if, if you know how to speak the language, if you know how to express what you want, this kind of, uh, this kind of UI is able to get uh, what you want done. So right now we're going to deep dive in a little bit more details of uh, why and how you should use this kind of uh, interface. So the first thing we're going to talk about is why you should be concerned about this and uh, why you should try to begin to like see if, if you can be able to add this uh, inside your uh, app. Thanks. 
So um, there was like a lot of evolution recently or not so recently. So the first one is like how we conversed. We, we always try to find the best way to converse. Uh, it can be by mail, by, uh, by um, calling someone or like more recent uh, application like FaceTime, for example. So it's something like uh, pe people are using a lot of messaging apps. It's like the most used apps uh, on the stores. And uh, they send to each other like trillions of, messaging each year, of messages each year. So it's something like we always try to um, do it better and converse better. Um, another thing is like when you have a service or you sell a, a product or something like that, um, you always try to give your users the best service. So um, the goal is to be the best and the fastest. So if someone wants to, for example, um, book a table at your restaurant, uh, maybe you, can, you have a phone number so they can call you, but they have to wait until you're open. Uh, maybe they have to wait because you are with another client on the phone. Uh, more recently, you can book a table on the website. So for your website, it's available like 24-7, uh, so that's better. But even if it's very useful and very straightforward, sometimes you have to adapt to the, to the UI. So if you go to one restaurant or another, or you're on uh, like uh, the fork or another uh, booking uh, site, it will not be the same UI. So you, the user have to adapt and check like, okay, where do I have to click to go next? And with a chatbot or a conversational interface, you are guiding the user through each step. So for example, for booking a table, just like, okay, which restaurant, at what time, okay, I need more info, or if the user wants to change something, okay, maybe I can go back and change something, like you're talking to someone. And it's available 24-7 because, uh, 20, yeah, 24 seven because it's a bot, so yeah. So just to know who has already used a conversational inter interface, that can Use. be Siri or Google Assistant or Google Home. So I think, yeah, most of you. And who uses it like more than once a day? Okay, so, and for different things are always the same thing. So who uses it for different kind of things, like more than two or three? <laughs> okay, only one. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the thing is like, it's still the early days. So um, for now, Maybe you have experienced some stuff with the assistant or uh, Google Home, like, okay, I didn't understand you, or you don't have the, your language is not supported, or uh, the answer is not what you were looking for. Um, but because we're still like in the early days, been like only one or two years since we have assistants, so yes. Uh, oh, sorry, okay, thanks. Talk to the mic. <laughs> uh, as you can see, uh, people for now just use their assistants for the same things, actually, like setting a timer, playing a song, or read the news, um, because people don't really know what they can do with this kind of interface. Um, it's getting better and better because, yeah, there is a more and more stuff going on. But for now, if you have maybe a bot on, a, on an assistant, uh, your users don't know about it. But the thing is, it's getting better and better. Um, even if we're still at the early stages, like uh, half of smartphone users are using assistants actually. Um, and you have a lot of sales of smart speaker uh, this year and the past year. And um, we noticed that users, if they want to speak to your company or to ask something or to have an information, they really prefer to use chatbots because it's like talking to someone. It's really more natural than having to go through an app looking for the help or looking for the one service they want. Uh, another thing is um, there's not only the users that are getting used to it, uh, also the developers, um, because some tools uh, are getting more and more used by developers because, yeah, actually, you can do more and more, and we'll see that just a bit later. So here is just an example about how we are going to um, kind of play it? Why is it not working? Just here is an example of an application where you can buy clothes, for example. So in this case, most, most of the time when you go to an app, you want to do like one thing. Um, if I open my uh, app about buying clothes, maybe I need a, a new white blouse for uh, an interview. So if you have to go through the app, you have to adapt to the app and find um, where is the category and the filters. So just waiting for it to start. Here. No, no, no. I don't know. OK, it's OK. No, it's OK. It's loading. So just like you have to choose the category, then filter by 
type of clothes you want and filter by color, then you have to do like 10 clicks to access a list of what you really want. What about you have like a, an interface, like in the store, when you come in the store and ask a salesman like, uh, where are your white blues? So here you can do that actually on your app. Um, you have your data and you just add a conversational interface saying, okay, find me a white blouse and then it can help you find it. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay, so just to sum up why you should be concerned about this. Um, uh, inter um, interactive um, conversational interface are really intuitive because you don't need your users to be used to it. Uh, they just like follow a natural conversation and it's like the most natural things to converse. Um, we don't talk uh, much, much about it, but it's really accessible. Like for uh, visually impaired people, um, it's like the best thing they can do because you know for now, for example, on the, on the iPhone or on Android, they can like read what's on the screen, but all the apps are not accessible. And with that, you just like give them the, the, better, the best accessibility they can have. Um, it's also personalized, so um, like you, you already have, I think, analytics, so you know uh, what your user like the most about uh, your product. But here you can also personalize the way you talk to the users. For example, uh, if the user said like, uh, I want to see the new collection that you just just get out, it's like, okay, I know you want the new collection, but I also knew that I also know that you like sneakers, so maybe I can show you the new uh, collection of sneakers and be like more in a personal um, interaction. And the last thing that's for me is like a, a really big plus when you have conversational interface is like you can identify your users' needs needs uh, better than just having analytics on where your users are clicking on your app. You know. Because, for example, imagine you just like sell shoes, and I don't know, 60% of your users ask, uh, do you sell blouses? Maybe you should consider starting to sell blouses because all of your uh, user or consumers are going to buy some. And this, you cannot actually see it via just a graphical Analytics. interface. So the last point that uh, are leading us to conversational interfaces are uh, the evolution of technology, of course, because like 30 years ago, we are not able to have uh, a simple, um, simple tools to perform that, but we have today. Uh, we have like cloud platforms that help you um, that, and are not so expensive that they used to be, that can help you uh, host your data and etc. Uh, you have machine learning that was not as what it is today. Uh, you have deep learning with the tools like TensorFlow by Google, and all the other API about speeches, like translation, um, natural languages, speech languages. And all of these pre-trained API are um, packed, and they made a tool named Dialogflow that we are going to see how it works just a little after that. So, you, have, you already have your data because you have a product, you have an app, and you have uh, maybe your blouse is stored somewhere in the database. And there's pre-trained API that are available for you just to use. So you just go for it. Uh, it's really easy to start. There's the conversational support, multilingual support that is going to be better and better. Uh, Cross-platform support, so we're going to talk about adding it in an Android app, but if you also have an iOS one or a website, you can add the same stuff, like do all the intelligence once and port it everywhere. It's high performance and it's a like complete solutions with machine learning integrated. You don't have to have like a data scientists in your uh, team to do that. So, um, what should you uh, start with when you want to add conversational interface inside your app? So the first thing to do is to identify your user's persona. So you will not do the same conversation if you sell blouses or if you want to book a restaurant, for example. Um, because people on the other side are not the same. Or if, is, is it for maybe uh, senior people or young people? On the same side, uh, if you do something for young people, your bot may be like uh, more young or do some jokes or, you know, like to be appealing for your users. The third uh, thing you should uh, be concerned about is, of course, the functionalities you want to offer uh, your users. So what is good with conversational interface is like you can just begin with one or two 
features like, okay, your uh, bot just answer one or two questions, and then you can add more and more. And you can always go to production just with one more features. Um, so yeah, just begin with one or two that can be answered or like uh, the, 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 the big parts of your app, what your app is doing. Just do that and that's enough. The first thing we have to think about is like uh, having a conversation is not like uh, maybe asking a web service and then okay, maybe it's, it's a success or error. In conversation, in, converse, in conversation, there's no such thing as errors. So when you don't know to do some things, and when your bot doesn't know how to answer, you have to like be um, more engaging. Like, okay, sorry, I can't do that, but I, we have to think about the error flows. So the happy pass, what we call the happy pass, is like when everything is going to be okay. Like the user has question, the bot can answer, and etc. And they just go back and forth. But when there's an error, you have to think about what you're going to do next. And the last thing is like, okay, just test it. It's a conversation, so just maybe try it on on a colleague or on someone just to see if it's okay and if it's logic. And uh, even if it just do two or three stuff, it's fine. So just to talk about some vocabulary. So when you have done all of the thing on your paper, uh, you can actually start to create your agent. Your agent is like your bot, like it's a conversation tool. When you have your agent, you can actually define your entities. Entities, um, it's like your filter about what the user says and what are you going to do if they say one sentence or one another. For example, if we define a eat something entity, if the user said, I want to eat some banana, you have defined the trigger phrase, eat some banana, and you know that you have to go through the eat something intent, and then your bot will respond. Uh, for this thing. If your user says something else, it will go maybe through another intent or through an error fallback flow. So with intent, you ha will have entity. So it's something is one intent, but you can be more precise about what you want to eat. For example, okay, uh, do you want to eat some bananas, some apples? So maybe if the user just say, I want to eat, you can tell him, okay, I need more information to go through. So just tell me what you want to eat and eat some bananas. Here, bananas is the entity. So just to dip down a little about how it is working now. Um, so you have your user and the device, the inputs. So in your app, it can be like uh, the keyboard or a voice message. Um, the user says something, then it goes through the Dialogflow API. And Dialogflow does all the filtering for you. We're going to show you how it works um, when you have defined your intents and entities. Then you can have if you have a backend, for example, like uh, that is uh, going through your database to search for white blouses, for example, you can have some code here. Like if the user said, "I want white blouses," you just go through your databases and um, and give back all the white blouses that you have. Then there is a callback that is sent through Dialogflow, and Dialogflow sends it back to your uh, interface. Um, and then let Elaine continue to show you how we implemented it in like uh, just a technical demonstration um, about how it works and how, how we managed to do this. <coughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, we just put exactly the same uh, diagram here, but for our case, I'm going to explain just a little bit what we have done. We have taken an existing app. It's the uh, Android Makers app. It's a conference that is going to take place in Paris next week. They have, uh, it's a basic uh, conference app. They have all the information about the sessions, about the speakers, and the code is open source. So we said, okay, let's try and get the, the data that they used and uh, integrate a new screen that uh, we will implement the um, conversational interface. So here you can see that the input uh, on the up, uh, right here on the uh, <coughs> on the upper side, it's um, the user that is going to make a query either by text or using voice through the end to the official Android app. Then it's going to Dialogflow, as uh, just as uh, Jade has explained, and we have hooked up uh, the Dialogflow with a webhook that is hosted on uh, Firebase called Functions. But you are not obliged to use a Firebase Cloud Functions. You can use a, um, a Lambda, uh, Amazon Lambda Services, uh, uh, Azure Cloud Functions, Heroku, whatever you want, wherever your backend is. But you have used a Firebase. 
And uh, the data about the sessions are stored also on the real-time uh, Firebase. Uh, Firebase uh, database in real time, but of course you can also do whatever uh, database that you want. And uh, then, um, so the user uh, does the query, it goes to a dialog flow that matches the intent, goes to Firebase called functions that is connected with the Firebase um, real time database. We get the response and then we show it back to the user basically. So I'm going to show you how it works a little more in detail, dialog flow. So this is do I need to zoom or is it OK? I don't know. I'm going to zoom it a little bit. Yep, yep. I think maybe that's a little bit better. Uh, so this is how, what uh, Dialogflow looks like. I'm here on the uh, intent screen. So we have one intent for our example. It's called a get uh, a list of sessions. OK, the server is not available. OK. Get a list of sessions using some filters. Uh, we thought a little bit about what we were going to do. So. Uh, it's really not useful for a conference app. It's not useful to say, oh, okay, I want to browse every session that there's going, uh, uh, there's going on on the conference. No. What a, what a uh, conversational uh, uh, experience that is uh, really useful for the user would be like, uh, what are the sessions that are going on right now? What are the sessions that are going, uh, coming up uh, afterwards? And using some filters, like for the data, for the Android Maker's uh, sessions, we have the language, we have the level, uh, because the sessions are either in French or in English. We have the level of the session, uh, beginner, intermediate, advanced. Um, what, uh, uh, what other kind of feature that the we time. have? The time, either it, it's a current uh, session or a next session or at a specific time, like at 4, at 5, at 3. So you can see here on the, um, when you uh, define your, your, your intent, you, you have to give uh, Dialogflow a lot of examples of actually how the user is going to express himself in order to do what he wants. So here you see that you have a lot of uh, kind of different uh, examples. Give me French talks. What is next? French sessions now. Expert sessions, et cetera, et cetera. And so you give a lot of examples. and it's um, behind that, that, that's machine learning. There's, there's always learning uh, with the examples that we gave. Uh, you don't have to do exactly this kind of uh, examples. That you don't have to exp express themselves like exactly like this. You can do like uh, synonyms and, and stuff like that. Uh, so you have uh, maybe uh, see that the entities here, uh, they are highlighted on, the, on your uh, examples here. So we can take a look. Yes, no, I don't want to say it. You can take a look of um, the entities that we have created. We have for, like a custom time entity that is next or current, current sessions or next sessions. And we have uh, also um, defined some, some synonyms. And for the level, we have beginner, intermediate, and experts with a lot of, um, with a lot of synonyms. And you have also seen that we, we made it in English and French, but we are going to, uh, do the demonstration in English. It, just to add something, you don't see the language here because the language is the system entities. Oh, because yes. uh, Dialogflow offers us the opportunity to have like uh, numbers or, or events or stuff that are already in the system. So we, we don't define language. Uh, it's already defined for us. So yeah. if someone say French or English, we you don't have to define, define it. new yes. entities. It's already defined here. And also for the time. If, you, if he says, oh, at 5, at 4 p.m., something like that, you can get the time uh, with the system uh, that time. Uh, what is really cool too in dialog flow is that once you have defined uh, the agent with your entities and, and uh, intents, you can try it right away. So I can say, uh, give me the current sessions right here. So you can see that it has uh, <coughs> given me a response. It was linked with the webhook because right here on the fulfillment side, we said, okay, uh, I want this intent to uh, trigger a webhook call. So we have our webhook uh, hosted on Firebase fun functions. And it has made a, a query uh, with the database and given me the response. We can see right here what, what, the pa what, what uh, parameters uh, we send uh, to the webhook. And what I wanted to show you is the JSON that is actually generated from the webhook. Yes, that's the, the big uh, d disadvantage of uh, cloud, <laughs> cloud solutions. Everything is in real time. Can you please uh, all switch uh, your Wi-Fi, please? <laughs> OK. So here you see uh, all, uh, everything that is coming back from um, the webhook uh, back to Dialogflow that is going to uh, be given back to the user. 
a lot of uh, boilerplate things, but what is really interesting to us is what is behind the fulfillment, that is the data that was um, generated by the, uh, um, by the webhook, so, and especially um, what is inside the, the data. Uh, we have made <coughs> a, custom, uh, a custom data right here that only gives us the IDs of the sessions that uh, corresponded to the query that uh, we just made. Because we are going to we are going to hook this agent with an Android app. The Android app it already ha it already has all of all of your data. You don't need to send back all the information about the sessions. The only sending the, the session IDs is is, uh, is sufficient. And now I'm going to show you what it looks like right here. Okay, looks good. So here is the the official Android app. Uh, right now in production they have only the, those three. Um, those three um, tabs right here, but this is what we have done. We have created um, a chatbot interface here. So I can ask a question, the same one that I did there, what are the current sessions? And of course, um, the, the sessions are not taking place right now. It's not real data. We have actually, uh, yes, the, the, the data is real. What is not real is the date. We have put, uh, for now, we have put um, Monday, uh, Monday, at, Monday 12. at 12.30. So the now it's uh, Monday at 12.30, so you can do some demonstrations. So you see right here it has uh, retrieved uh, the IDs from um, the database on Firebase, and we can actually um, show it back to the user right here as we want, because this is, this is your app. If you want to use your colors, if you want to use your style, uh, you can do whatever you want. And of course, the, oh, yeah, come on, work. So we have made our dialogue flow um, agent. We have thought about our conversational paths. We have uh, defined everything that we want to use here. And of course, dialogue flow works. It has a really good uh, integration that is with the Google Assistant. So of course, we have made also an integration with the Google Assistant. Oh, there's some uh, spoiler that. <laughs> uh, so I can say uh, talk to Android makers. Oh, makers. And if it wants to work, so only to show you also the difference uh, again when you have this is your Android app including conversational features with dialogue flow. And if he wants to launch my action here, this is the you see you saw how I, I launched the Google Assistant and I said talk to Android makers. This is the, the Assistant app. This is the action that is using exactly the same infrastructure. There is do, uh, exactly the same agent on dialogue flow. Exactly the same. Uh, um, database on uh, Firebase. Maybe functions. you can show what you tested before. <laughs> Maybe I can shut off the Wi-Fi and go to 4G or H. Let's try once again. And, th and this, by the way, is how you launch. Um, an action. You have like a trigger, a trigger phrase to launch your action. So yeah. So this is our action on uh, Google Assistant. So you can s now I can ask for the current sessions. <laughs> um, so yeah. So it is exactly the same data that is uh, being showed uh, on the app and on the Google Assistant. Uh, so, but the um, like the downside for using on the Google Assistant is that. You don't have the choice of the interface of the GUI. You have to to comply with the. You have only a, a, um, access to a handful of widgets that you can use. But yeah, it's still pretty useful. So what we have done is that when you click on a session, we can we are going to show the description. Okay, this is the description, and then up uh, we can ask some other question or we can show the details on the website. So wh what do you see here? You have some suggestions at the end because it's like a widget uh, that um, we can add easily with the Google Assistant interface. And we didn't do it inside our apps, but you can do whatever you want. If you want to add yes. some suggestions, just like we did a little simple interface with like a simple uh, table with the data. 
but you can have suggestion. You can do the UI you want. Um, if you want to put it on a plain screen like we did, or like a fab button and overlay uh, on your app, or just take, I don't know, half of your screen, you can actually do whatever you want uh, inside your own app. Yeah, it's your app. And once you've done all the work, you just have to trigger like, uh, you, you just have to add um, the fulfillment. Maybe you can show on Dialogflow all the integration third party. Because it's really easy. Once you have all the intelligence, if you have maybe a Slack or a Telegram or a Facebook uh, Messenger uh, page, you want to add a bot on Facebook, you can integrate it directly here. And it will use the same webhook and the same filter it's intent in Dialogflow. Yes. So this is, was the last slide, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, so yeah, so <laughs> so you did your dialogue flow. Uh, it works, of course. It dialogue flow works really well. The Google Assistant that is either coming uh, for the data coming from the Google Home or the Google Assistant on phones. What we showed to you today was the integration right here uh, with uh, mobile apps by using the dialogue flow SDK. And as Jade was saying before, dialogue flow um, has a lot of more integrations. Uh, with Facebook Messenger, with Slack, with Twitter, and this is basically where your users are, and w this is uh, things that your users are already using, so it's really important for your brand to be present on all, all the channels. Um, so that's it for us today. The code, uh, as, as I said on the beginning, the code is open source. We have forked, uh, for now it's on a fork, uh, the code that integrates the Dialogflow SDK, and you can check it out. And so, yeah, that's it for Thank us. You. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs> if you have some question, we are available just after. Yes, just we're going to hang around. Yeah. Uh, I know that we are really uh, late on schedule. Yeah. So just uh, come to us uh, if you have any questions. Thanks. Thanks.